today's Pokemon review is on Garchomp. This is the battle feature figure by Jazzwares slash Wicked Cool Toys and this is what it does. I was happy to see them making a Garchomp figure because I don't really have one of this size so I'm happy to add it to my collection. Now on the back we see the other figures released alongside the Garchomp including Gengar and Blastoise both of which I have done reviews on so go and check those videos out. And if you don't want to miss out on any of my Pokemon toy reviews, make sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you know exactly when I upload. So normally at this point I'd be putting the figure down and it will be standing but as you can see this Garchomp it's really hard to get it to stand and that's because the figure stands by balancing on its claws on its feet. That is accurate to the Garchomp character model but that means for this figure it's really difficult to get it to stand and it becomes a delicate balancing act when you're trying to get it to stand. Now it is possible to get the Garchomp to stand as it should on its claws and what I've found is if you have the claw part of its feet flush to the ground then you can move the body back so that its tail is also flush to the ground and at that point it will stand as long as the arms are out to its side and not at the front. Let's have a more detailed look at Garchomp with a 360 degree spin. The battle feature on this figure works by using the notch that's on its back. Now with this notch if you press the notch down you can see the tail starts to move. So as you click it down it moves in one direction and when you let it go it goes back to its original position. So I assume this is in trying to mimic one of Garchomp's moves which is Dragon Tail. Now like previous battle features I'm not the biggest fan of this battle feature but it's definitely not the worst battle feature they've done and it is different from all the other previous battle features so it's got that going for it. So I always try out the battle feature on unfortunately the Ash figure and the first thing I noticed is it's really difficult to get your finger on the notch in order to make the battle feature work. Once you are able to push the notch down though it does work and as you can see it does knock Dash down. Let's see that again in slow motion. The other thing I've noticed about this feature is you have to get really close to the figure that you're trying to use the feature on because the tail is really short. I think they could have made a bigger tail here to make it more easy to use the battle feature. The other thing about the short tail is it doesn't have much power in it. It is able to knock down an unstable figure like Ash here. But if you were to use it on a more stable figure then I don't think it'd be as effective. Six points of articulation on this figure. The first point of articulation is in the arm which is on a ball hinge joint so you get all the rotation there. It's also got a swivel on it which means it's got a huge range of posability there. I really like these joints and I hope that Jazzwares keep putting them in in future figures. Next I thought the head was a point of articulation because it has that seam line around its neck. And you are able to sort of move it around but it feels really stiff and it's like the head's gonna just come off. When I did manage to turn it around like this you can see there's a big gap in its neck area. So I don't really think that it's meant to be a point of articulation. So I'd just leave it as it is because 
it almost feels like it's going to snap off. Next point of articulation are in the legs which are on a simple swivel joint. So the legs do rotate around if you can get around the arm a full 360 degrees. And you can use this sort of articulation to get the figure to do a sitting pose. Or if you want you can also have him head first into the ground. Last two points of articulation are in the tail which is broken into two different sections. This is for the bowel feature and it just moves from side to side. Painwork on this figure is immaculate. As you can see the star on the nose is very nicely painted in. So are the eyes and the individual teeth. Also the red section on its body as well as the yellow section are painted within the lines. They also painted underneath the arms which they didn't really have to and it shows a good attention to detail there. You have the copyright logo and the S4 logo underneath out of the way where it should be. Moving on to the mould, the mould of this figure is excellent. It's a great likeness to the Garchomp character and I really like the head sculpt on this figure. I think they've done a really good job on it. Other than that we have the arms which in terms of the fin parts are made of a softer more bendable plastic. The same for the big fin on its back. The rest of the figure is made of a harder plastic including the tail. So overall really happy with the paintwork and an excellent job on the mould of the figure as well. The only part of the mould that I don't like is obviously the feet because you have to balance it on its claws and it, that doesn't work as well. So if they had gone against the character model and made it a more flat footed figure I think it would have worked better for the figure itself because then you could position the figure in all sorts of different poses whereas right now you cannot pose the figure with the arms in the front because it makes it too much top heavy and it just falls over. So the only way you're able to pose it right now is having the arms to its sides. In terms of size Gachom stands at four and a quarter inches tall and he's about two inches if you use the body but if you use the wings then it can go up to five inches in length. And in terms of width to the end of the tail we're looking at about 3 inches. Now I wanted to show you a comparison with the Charizard battle feature figure that they released because these two are very similar size and shape. The one thing I want to show is how big Charizard's tail is because I think they really could have made Garchomp's tail the same size. And then the battle feature would have been a lot more effective and it would have looked better as well. Other than that the Charizard and the Garchomp do look really good next to each other. Now unfortunately I do not own the Cynthia Nendoroid figure that came with a Garchomp. I think that would have been an excellent comparison to do between the two Garchomp figures. So I thought I'd show you Garchomp alongside the Pikachu face parts case which is the only Nendoroid related thing I have out of its box. Just to give you an idea of its size compared to a Nendoroid. So that was my review of the Garchomp battle feature figure. Overall I think it's a very decent figure to own especially if you don't have another Garchomp figure. It is a decent size. The only things I didn't like were the battle feature and the fact that it's really difficult to get it to stand. Other than that I think it's an excellent addition to a Pokemon collection. This figure also comes with this leaflet that shows you other S4 figures including Ivysaur, Charmeleon and Wartortle. All of which I have done reviews on in my previous three videos so go and check those out. And next up I will be reviewing the Machamp battle feature figure. So if you don't want to miss out on that review make sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you know exactly when the video comes out. 
If you like that video, hit the thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more Pokemon toy reviews, hit that subscribe button now. Now go back and watch all my other videos. And I will see you all next time. Bye.